Hello everyone, thank you for checking out today's video. In this video, we're gonna be covering how to create order guides on ServiceNow. Now, here is how ServiceNow describes order guides. They describe them as submitting a single, self, single service catalog request that generates several items. For example, a new employee hire order guide can contain several items that new employee employees commonly need, such as business cards, computers, and cell phones. After selecting this order guide, the customer can then provide information about the new employee, including information and location and job title. The order guide then submits an order for catalog items like business cards based on the details provided. So essentially the order guide will go in, you only fill in the, the variable or the variables or the fields once, and then it takes those um, fields that the user filled in and it applies them all against all of the associated catalog items or record producers for that order guide. Okay, so let me show you guys what I mean. So I have two test catalog items that I built on my PDI. So I have this one that's called catalog test and YouTube catalog item. So you see they share two fields, right? So this one has requested by, this one has requested by, this one has contact email, this one has contact email, and then this one has another one called requested software. So say that this one was like to order a computer, and then this one was to order a cell phone. And rather than the user having to go in to these catalog items individually and submit them, they're not that many fields, but imagine there was like eight fields on here and then six or seven of the fields were shared across these two. You wouldn't want the user to have to go in and you know create more work for themselves. You would just create an order guide and then it would have the fields that kind of would map from that initial order guide to the associated catalog items. And I have one, for example, on my work instance where I have an order guide and it's associated with like eight, nine, or 10 different catalog items potentially. So it's how order users can go in and they can request different types of licenses. So we have like a bunch of different Adobe products, a bunch of different Microsoft products. And if they select yes for those options, then what it does is it starts mapping details from that order guide to the associated catalog items. So like if they selected Photoshop, um, and then they also selected like Microsoft Visio, then it would take all those catalog items and then it would go ahead and apply them to the Microsoft Visio and the Adobe Photoshop catalog items um, in their order guide process. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you just type in order guides in your all applications menu and come over to order guides, we can go and select new. And we'll call this one, oops, call this one YouTube order guide. And we will place it in our new service catalog that we created a few episodes ago. For category, we can place it under, we'll put it under other. We'll put it as YouTube order guide test for the, the short description. Okay. So everything looks good on there. You can hide, add to cart, show, include toggle. Yeah, we don't need that. Okay, let's go ahead and hit save. All right, and then if we come down to the bottom, we have a bunch of different options here underneath our, um, our related lists. So the main ones that we're gonna focus on are the variables and then the role base. And then, but you could also set up <clears throat> Very similar to catalog items, we can create policies, client scripts, um, decide who you want it available for, not available for, etc. So from here, what we'll do is we'll come back uh, over here to the variables, and we have two variables that are matching. So essentially what we'll do is we will ask the user to provide the requested by and the contact email. So let's go ahead and copy those variables here. And this one is a reference. So I'll put you first, mandatory, and you're requested by. Oops, sorry, this is the field that the user fills in. And we need to go ahead and select where we're referencing, we're referencing the user table. Is this user? Active is true. Cool, all right, that works for me. And let's head back over, create another variable. And this one is for a contact email. Okay, and this one will be second. 
You're also mandatory. All right, let's check it out. Make sure it looks fine. Yep, looks good. Um, because it is only two, it probably makes sense for us to do like a dual container so that they're side by side. But, you know, that's just uh, just for appearances. We don't need that in this video. So let's go back. And now what we need to do is we need to come over our role base. And this is how we map our variables from our order guide to the associated catalog items. So we'll go ahead and select new. Okay. And this is the guide that it's coming from. And this is where you set your conditions. So like I mentioned before, only sometimes our order guide on the, the software order guide that I described that I work on on my work instance, only sometimes it would apply to that associated catalog item like the Photoshop. The user would have to select, yes, I do want Photoshop. And then, um, you know, right here, I would select that variable for Photoshop and I'd put Photoshop is yes. And then this rule base would apply. Otherwise, it wouldn't apply. Okay, so include this item. So we will do our two catalog items that we created. So we have our first one. Okay. And we'll just use the cart layout, that's fine. Quantity, you can set that too. But, you know, we're just gonna kinda leave everything as is, and then we'll just add the two variables. Okay, so this is the item variable. Requested by, and then this is the order guide variable. <clears throat> requested by, so now they match. Okay, and let's do the same thing for contact email. Contact email. We'll do insert and stay. Awesome. Okay, so now let's go back. All right, looks good. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and select this one, catalog test. Oh, sorry, what am I doing? Derp, that was the guide field. So catalog test. Okay, we'll do insert and stay. You don't have to do the insert and stay, I just do that because it saves time. Uh, again, we don't need any sort of condition because we want it to always appear. So same thing down here. We need to go ahead and select the item variable. So requested by, requested by, save. Contact email. Contact email, insert and stay. All right, now. I think we should be good to go. I don't really know what at this position is. Does that mean one? I think you just put. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. That, that makes sense. So at this position is which one do you want to appear first? So like <clears throat> after you move away from your order guide and you start filling out the rest of the variables slash fields for your catalog items, which one do you want to appear first? Which one do you want to appear second? So we'll have the catalog item appear first and then catalog test appear second. Okay, so here let's type in able tutter. Contact email, we'll put test at email.com. Then we'll do choose options. Okay, and you can see our first one up is YouTube catalog item. The only thing missing that wasn't mapped from our order guide is the requested software. So we'll just do Microsoft um, Teams. Next we'll do, we'll do next tab. And you can see this one didn't even have an additional variable, so everything was already filled out. Cool, all right. So the next thing that we'll do is we'll hit check out. And what this is gonna do um, See, so you could add a shipping address, ship special instructions if you need to, so in case this is like a, a piece of hardware or some other item that makes sense that where you would actually want to ship it out to the user, you could put that in here. So uh, it's not relevant for what we're doing in this video, though. So what it's going to do when we submit this is it's going to... <clears throat> Man, my voice is all raspy. It's going to take these two catalog items that were just created from that order guide, and it's going to wrap them into one request and then each of these will be their own request item. And then if there's any workflows associated with them, you know, they'll have their own associated catalog task too. So let's go ahead and hit checkout. 
Okay, and you can see we have this request right here that was just created. And then within that request, we have two request items. Like I said, we have our YouTube catalog item and we have a YouTube, or I'm sorry, catalog test. So if we were to go on these, um, this one had an associated workflow that we built a while ago where it creates a catalog task. Whereas this one, um, I must've just used a generic workflow because I don't remember setting one up for this. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So order guys are just intended where if you have something that makes sense to put as a bundle, just like they described in the documentation where maybe a new user needs a computer, a cell phone, an office, whatever, and you don't want the requester to have to go in and fill out all the same fields over and over and over again. They just fill it out once on the order guide. It applies to all the relevant catalog items. They submit it. They just submit that one request and then it saves them a bunch of time because then within that request, you know, they may have, you know, seven or eight different catalog items for all the different um, uh, items that they're ordering. So that way they're not having to go in and do it individually. And that's uh, pretty much it. If you guys found this video helpful, please consider giving this video a like. Please also consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you all in the next video very soon.